When I ask someone about food in Japan, they most likely say sushi or ramen. In reality, Japanese cuisine is so much more than these popular dishes. So join me for two weeks of eating in Japan as I discover the diverse and amazing food of Tokyo. I will be sharing the location of each restaurant, what we got from their menu, prices, and my honest opinion. done eating the meal was absolutely delicious the only drawback of this place is that they only have 10 seating places inside so you have to wait for a lot we waited for you know maybe 45 minutes but the people uh, in our back I think they're up for maybe a two-hour wait the food is so good but also you have to eat it pretty quickly because we had a timer when uh, the fire that was heating our meat was supposed to end and I would say it was around 25, 30 minutes. So my last two pieces of meat, I had to just, you know, heat on the warm stone, but without the fire. And they're really quick to, uh, for you to pay to uh, leave the restaurant so they can take in more customers. So this is not a place where you can relax and, you know, enjoy your time. This is in, eating really fast, really good food, and then out. Japanese people are just crazy about strawberries. I see strawberries everywhere. I think we will get some strawberry with mochi and maybe a strawberry drink to indulge in this uh, Japanese fantasy that has to do with strawberries. Mochis are always a pleasant surprise. Let's see how this one tastes. Mm. And this is a big ass uh, strawberry in there. It is so juicy. Mm. <laughs>
in our sushi parlors in the western one you can get miso soup uh, before eating sushi here you also have the choice of a savory egg custard and this one comes with oh, our order so this comes with the mushroom and also with some chicken meat it's very delicious More than 10 choices of different salmon. Then this is all shrimp, like red rice prawn shrimp, seared prawn and cheese, prawn avocado, four types of squid. This is all mackerel, scallops. I love them. So they also have a shellfish sampler. This is the uni, but I'm wondering if um, I can get it in a nice set. Let's see, no, no, no. Maybe this one, maybe I'll get this set. This is my tuna taster set. Sometimes tuna sushi can be very expensive depending on what type of tuna you get. So instead you can get this minced tuna that is uh, made from the less desirable parts because everything is minced together. And two of them are only 195 per set. This is something new that we're tasting today. This is baby fishes. They haven't really fully formed yet because they are transparent. Mm. The fish itself doesn't really have a taste. It's just the texture, like a little bit slimy, and you can taste like the small bones forming in the fish. A great place for ramen in Akihabara is the Hakata Haryu ramen shop. At the beginning, when you just enter, there is a vending machine with plenty of options and you can select all the ramens that you're gonna have, any side dishes or perhaps drinks. brought up really quickly, Eugene got himself um, a ramen with tonkotsu, that's pork and garlic, and I took a simple tonkotsu ramen, and both of them were delicious. Mine wa had this uh, creamy white broth, was like the pig of the, uh, the, the milk of the pig. It was, it was absolutely delicious. Also, when you're ordering the eggs, you can uh, order them in four levels of firmness. The one that I like most is the medium firmness. A ramen shop is not a shop where you hang out for two hours. You can eat, you eat very fast, ideally slurping, because Japanese believe this enhances the flavor, and then you leave. Although nobody asked us to leave uh, the store, we felt the pressure because there are people lining up at the entrance who also wanted to have a bite. So um, I would say like 30, 35 minutes and we were done.
For our brunch, we found a special place that has a good rating and review, but also has people lining outside, which is pretty frequent for Tokyo. You're basically writing how many people are in your party, and uh, you wait. And everybody in Japan is pretty relaxed about waiting for a long time. So the one that we got is this fried, boiled and deep fried set of 18 pieces of gyoza for a little bit less than 1,000 yen. Um, a dip, leek and garlic for 70 yen. And then Eugene also got this soup dumpling in uh, a grated British soup because it's kind of cold outside and the total so far comes to 1,300 yen. I think it's pretty accessible. Let's see if it's gonna fill us up. Let me tell you about each kind before we run out of gyoza. First off is this boiled gyoza. It's falling apart a little bit, but so far in terms of taste, it's my favorite because I like how it's very gentle. Mm. The sauce that I mix here is just soy sauce and some chili peppers. And this is how the leek and garlic sauce uh, looks like. It's actually not a dip. Next one is this fried one. It's a, a mix between boiling and deep frying where one part is fried and the other part is boiled. Mm. This one just deep fried. Mm. This one by far is the pre crispiest but taste wise i feel like it's not the best so i would say that the boiled ones and the fried ones are my favorites round two of dumplings here we go again they were too delicious for us just to eat one portion We are done with our big gyoza lunch. Spent 2,400 yen for two big portions of gyoza and some soup. Uh, I would highly recommend this place if you're earning for some gyoza because they do just one thing and they do it pretty well. meals. <laughs> Thank you. 
Shabu has soup as many hot pots, usually it's this bland one. So to make it more tasty, you uh, take some vegetables and basically put it all in here. I took lots of stuff, including some onions, some cilantro. You want to make it more flavorful. It's all you can eat, so whenever we are finished with this beef or pork, we'll get more. We have a couple of sauces here. So this is sesame sauce. You pour it in a plate. Once you boil your meats here, uh, you dip them in the sauce and you enjoy them. There are a lot of free things uh, in the buffet. You can get your rice, your noodles, or uh, your own dessert. No. This is the famous Shibuya Crossing. It's buzzing with people. It is so busy now on a weekend night. All sorts of billboards, all sorts of lights, all sorts of people. It's really impressive. It's hectic, but at the same time, it has this uh, energy that uh, it's hard to feel in anywhere, um, anywhere else because there are literally so many people here. one of the busiest neighborhoods in uh, Tokyo and obviously all those people who come to uh, you know see this neighborhood have to eat somewhere uh, so it was pretty challenging to find a place to eat in the evening this is the third restaurant and luckily it was opened and could seat us uh, we are uh, doing Korean barbecue although we're in Japan uh, but Korean barbecue, I feel like it's a very good idea anytime because it's just like such a souping option when you cook for yourself, you eat lots of meat, rice, kimchi, just an ideal uh, evening meal for me. Now, one of the nicest parts of riding a train at Shinkansen is to eat a bento box on the train while you're riding. 
The boxes are called Ecuban, and they became very popular in the 80s. Then they kind of died out and made a comeback a couple of years ago with the advent of Shinkansen and the fact that it doesn't have a restaurant card. And you do have to eat something during the two hours and 30 minutes that it's riding to Osaka. So uh, I'm gonna check out what they have. I know that uh, they can be a hit or a miss and I hope that mine will be super delicious. Let's go. Mm -hmm.